Hey everyone, welcome to CC Entertainer Spotlight. I'm your host, Scott J. Carroll. Today we're sitting down and talking to filmmaker Brad Dietrich of 16-Bit Picnic. Brad? How's it going, guys? Going oh, great, Brad. How you doing? Good, good, good. Just uh, settling in for the night, actually. No, it's, it's... it's... Obviously. <laughs> it is, uh, it's good to see you again. How's, uh, how's the year been treating you? It's been all right. Just been a lot of work. Um, just, you know, working all the time and, uh, doing my freelance stuff. And of course, 16 bit, you know, right. So 16 bit picnic, that's what, uh, we're here to talk about today. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, uh, we got a channel. Um, uh, I do a cooking show and video. It's a video game and cooking show. Uh, we do a recipe and a video game each episode. Uh, I'm one of the, one of the main co-hosts with, uh, Hayden is my other. And we kind of also have a couple of the guys helping us out every episode, like Larnell and Alex. Um, but we pretty much just put on this show. We're about five episodes deep, very young, trying to get things going. Uh, but we're having a lot of fun doing it. And that's kind of the main thing while we're doing it, to be honest. So, yeah. So you guys are just a big group of friends playing games and cooking food. Absolutely. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we actually uh, we actually have a clip of the show too. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about this? Yeah. So this is a clip from our newest episode. It's from episode five. Um, we're just getting uh, this one's kind of this one was fun. We kind this was actually the first time we got Larnell on board for the uh, show. Uh, Alex is the other guy. He's our musician, uh, and Ed uh, does all the music and sound effects. And and besides, you'll see me and Hayden, of course, right from the beginning. So yeah, show it up. So now what we did is we already did all screen, but let me go through the layers of this casserole. We did the put a refried bean layer right on top of that, and then on top of that was guacamole, sour cream. We did all the peppers, and then now we have the cheeses on top, which is feta cheese, habanero jack, and cheddar. For the last part, since this is all gets uh, layered in together, now we're just gonna put it in the oven, and then we're gonna let that cheese melt to get our finished product. So while we do that, I guess we should go back to some more 3D Mario World. It's cheese. It's, yeah, it's cheese. Uh, sometimes. It's sometimes cheese. Sometimes. That wasn't cheese. Cheese! Sorry, who's supposed to name Todd with one D? <laughs> oh, yeah. Todd! Oh, <laughs> Go on. That's Todd. all that's down here? Just Todd. Let's do it! <laughs> Secret mushroom? This had better be worth it. Of course it's never worth it. So it, it seems like a lot of fun. It just feels yeah. like you're sitting around hanging out with friends, right? Yeah, absolutely. And of course, doing what I like to do at the same time too, cooking games and filming stuff, you know? So what gave you the idea to combine video games and cooking into one show? So I kind of want, I've always had an idea of doing it for the last few years, kind of wanting to do some sort of cooking thing. I've kind of really gotten more and more into doing that as just like a hobby and just having fun with it. I'm no chef by all means. No, I am not a chef, but I just, I really love cooking and just really love like just trying things out, doing different recipes and not just what's down here in the South, but I also I've been dipping into a lot of different cultural differences to like Indian and Thai and Vietnamese and Mexican. Just, I really enjoy just not just learning some of those aspects, but also mixing them up too. And then I can't, that's where the idea of the show kind of started coming form and but i didn't want to just do a cooking show there's so many of them like my big inspiration for the cooking side of things is babish and mythical kitchen was my big two um but uh i, well, I, I thought then i kind of sparked like hey like i like playing uh, games is kind of always one thing we always want to kind of do as well why don't we do both and then i kind of pitched the idea with hayden and then we kind of both just took it off from there because it started off with just me and him so hayden was the other guy we saw in the clip yeah, he's the guy that's uh, in the uh, kitchen with me. Uh, he's my co-host and also co-creator, main co-creator. Um, he's a big part of it, and also you know he does a lot of helps with the promotional side of things and stuff like that as well, because he's really good with uh, we're a little bit better with words than I am. <laughs> so, uh, full disclosure, I actually uh, we're we're friends. I yeah. I know you outside of uh, entertainment and performances. And, uh, yeah, and. All of you guys, it's one of the fun things we always did was hang around and like play video games and watch you guys play games. Mm -hmm. And why do you think 
combining cooking with video games. Why do you think there's something heartening about that? Because it's 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 just like a group of friends hanging out. Like that was the core concept I wanted to do with this show. And what's better than like what we just said, like cooking and playing games with each other, playing friend like with friends. Like it's not like it's a bunch of strangers. Besides, unless I have like a you know a guest on the show, which we do on like the third episode so far, we have one uh guest. Uh, but we're gonna kind of continue to start having more guests too. But like we want it to be an environment of like, hey, this is we're here to have fun. We're not here to you know try to alienate you or uh try to be too professional to a point where we're boring too so you have to have fun it, yeah. it's what keeps it's what keeps the passion in there mm-hmm. so you you mentioned um you you mentioned inspirations like babbage and uh mythical kitchen and you talked about uh experiencing other uh other types of food in different restaurants when was your first can you remember your first experience with food outside of your normal culture um, I mean, obviously, I'm from Homa, you know that. Um, and Homa, for those who don't know, where is Homa? Yeah, I know. And that down there is what the cultural differences down there is Japanese, Chinese, and Mexican food. That's it. <laughs> uh, so that's <laughs> your, your normal like variation. So when I'm, I moved to New Orleans about four, three, four years ago. And that's kind of where I really started seeing those differences because that's the, a lot of the cultures are still here making their own food. And then New Orleans is so huge into food right now. Oh, yeah. It's exploding when it comes to different foods being tried out, too. So it's like the experimentation that's going on in this city right now is insane and people are loving it. And I want that to keep going. And that's kind of uh, moving here was definitely one of those big things. I was like, wow, OK. And definitely, I'd say, like, one of the big ones was, like, uh, it's one of my favorite places in the city. It's a place called Cafe Abyssina. Abyssina? It's oh, a, yes. I've it's been a, there. Yeah, Ethiopian food place. It's incredible. It's so good. So good. New it's Orleans. Like, it's, like, you you don't even, like, when you even eat it for the first time, you're like, what do I do? Because you don't eat, you don't have forks. It's all uh the that little, the rat, the uh, Not. The yeah. Non, yeah and then you just you're just eating the picking it with the bread and i love it because it's like a it's like a, almost a mix of like cajun and caribbean like it's like a weird mix of that i mean it's it's ethiopian but so it's the but, the first you know. time first time i ever had ethiopian food i ate it with a clown in texas mm-hmm. which is a completely another story but mm-hmm. it's it was one of the first experiences where I saw that, oh, man, food from other cultures. This is incredible. Yeah. And it opened up my eyes to how many different things you, yeah. you could make with it. And, and yeah. like you mentioned, New Orleans is a melting pot of so many different restaurants and so many yeah. wonderful places. Yeah. Um, yeah. If yeah. someone were coming to New Orleans, like where would you recommend they eat? That's not like a, you know, chain place. Well, that's hard because like I'm one of those people that's not like this is the best restaurant in the city. It's one of those things like okay, what I ask every single person that comes visits me that want to go eat, I'm like okay, so what do you feel like eating? So uh, I have a place for every type of food, and that's where I usually go. So that's kind of where more I go with things because you can't just say like the best Japanese place is the better than the best Chinese place because they're completely different, like entirely different. Like and then I have like favorite Vietnamese place, the Ethiopian place. There's some fusion places, barbecue place, seafood place. It it just goes on, right? So food is is important. It, it's really important to us. Uh, why do you think food is so so important to our ritual? Why do you think it brings so many people together? Well, definitely with uh down here, food's a big part of everything we do down here. Um. Not just because we have one, of course, like New Orleans is a port city. So you have all those cultures that came down here long, like over the last, what, 100, 200 years. Uh, so that's why you have a lot of that rich culture down here when it comes to food. But also as a just just alone Cajun culture, you have like the, what Cajun culture literally is, is there's nothing that's made small in Cajun culture. It's, <laughs> here's a pot of gumbo. Here's a pot of jambalaya here's a big old thing of crawfish it's about sharing it with everyone you love and that's that's cajun food and that's where it comes from i think there's a there's a strong similarity because like you know i grew up in new jersey and there's a heavy italian influence Mm -hmm. up and for us food was always a big big thing italian's exactly the same thing 
yeah, it's food, food is family and it brings everyone together. Mm -hmm. What, what inspired you to, to start cooking? Well, I mean, I've, my mom is my main influence in cooking. Like that, like I, I learned how to cook from her growing up. Uh, I mean, I started with the basics like cooking eggs and doing baked chicken and doing all the easy stuff. And then like, uh, kind of like me and her kind of have a bond where we always like to try different things and that's where i got that aspect of my like my brain's wired that way, my that way because of her because we'd like to try different recipes and try different things to eat and it kind of just grew from there you know just learning what she taught me and then once i moved out here kind of learning what i you know learned here yeah it, it's it's incredible uh because it was the same on my end my our parents taught us to cook at an early age and it's one of those things where you just get ingrained and it just becomes part of of your every day mm -hmm. but getting back to uh the the video game aspect of this um how do you think that these two things mix like how how did we get to the point where now we're at food and video games um I would say, I guess, because it kind of, it kind of almost does the same thing, like, like we just talked about how food does to me and me and yours, like culture that we came from. Video games is the same thing. We we don't like the funnest way to play a game is with a group of guys or girls, obviously, uh, anyway, or friends, just or friends. friends, just friends. Yeah, but still, I mean, whoever's like your best friends, like you, will always have those memory. Everyone has a memory of playing like something together, like. For the rest of their life like i have so many of those with the group i like they actually part most the, the the four guys the other three guys on the show are part of that main group i've been with my whole entire life so it's 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 just you know it's nice so it helps build these relationships mm -hmm. that that last absolutely um, how did you guys how do you pick which game to play with what meal to go with do you have like a thing in your head or do you just go oh yeah this sounds good we um it is kind of a mishmash. Um, lately, um, the first the first episodes were just like this would be a good starter, like with Mario Maker, and then Bloodborne was just I wanted to see Alex be in pain, um, <laughs> which is I do advise watching that one if you really want to watch some pain. Um, but after that, it was kind of like I've been really enjoying the last few episodes where it's like about four of like it's always four of us, and it's like a game that everyone can kind of really interact. Like I, we did overcooked on the uh, with TJ Nathan when he was on the show. Uh, overcooked two is a fantastic game to play with a group of people. Um, and then as you saw in the last one, we did 3D Mario World. And if you watch the entire gameplay segment on Extra Points on the YouTube, like there's so like our my group uh, and Scott knows this more than uh, just as well as I do. Uh, when my group plays together, it's about sabotaging each other pretty <laughs> much the entire time, and that's pretty much what that gameplay segment was. I don't think I've ever met a group of friends that played a game together that didn't just sabotage everyone the entire time. Yeah, that's like if you go watching that extra points of the 3D world from that, ep like we have the 16 bit uh, cooking show, but then we also have extra points, which is released the week after, which is the full gameplay segment of that ep of that episode. And you, the entire thing is just us being, you know, buttholes. <laughs> just, just jerks to each other, mm -hmm. pretty much. Yeah. But that's what games do. Mm -hmm. So games have become such an essential part of our culture. Like mm -hmm. we, you and I grew up playing video games. We didn't grow up together playing video games. Yeah. But like you mentioned, we all have memories of them. Like mm -hmm. the first time you, I beat my brother playing a video game or the first time you saw, like when you move from the little TV to the big TV with it. Yeah, absolutely. Why do you think that, they persist so strongly why do you think that games just keep coming at us and we keep coming back to them because it's it's to me it's the the biggest of it's it's become the biggest entertainment industry like bar like without even a question at this point because the amount of money it makes is ridiculous but um but it's just everyone can play a game like people don't realize when people like 
play games, people just think of like the hardcore games, like like what we do, like on our PCs or on our like maybe our Playstations and stuff like that. But you don't even think about the people that just play on their phone or play on like a like a Switch or I mean I have I play on my Switch all the time too. <laughs> but like they have simpler games that a lot of people that aren't really into games that play games. Like even people that don't play games play games. They just don't realize that <laughs> this may not be that intense of a game, but they play. They do, because I think it provides everyone just a little bit of escapism, just a, a chance to escape the world for a day. Yeah, it's kind of like, um, main, like the same mindset as board games, like, I, like especially when you get into some of the more deeper ones or even some of the casual ones. Like, it's the same thing. It's, it's the evolution, and yeah, it helps really. them reach more people. I think this year has been a year where we've, this past year, where we've needed games. Absolutely, um, more than ever. Yeah, they they absolutely help people escape, help people get a sense of control when when everything seemed kind of crazy and weird. Mm. Um, and we've 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 talked about this before in the past, you and I a little bit. But I always circle back whenever we talk about video games to the conversation of are video games art. And I know what I think, but w- what do you think about this? Hundred percent, like. Like, like, there's no doubt. Like, in any, like, any art, like it, it's, it's, a, it tells a story. Even if it's a painting, a movie, a TV show, a video game, it's a story, and that story is always told entirely different ways, different things. And video games are a part of that. And video games are very unique with that, to where, like, this, is like, like, for instance, like one of my favorite ones is Dark Souls. Uh, some people are like, there's no story there. I'm like, you're wrong. There's a lot of story going on in Dark Souls. The whole thing with Dark Souls is that it's told through item descriptions and dialogue and your actions. There's no cuts. There's rarely no cutscenes at all. No like exposition. Like you piece the story together by experiencing the game. And I think that's a brilliant way video games could tell a story. And now we also do have the more traditional Hollywood types like Uncharted and Last of Us and that kind of stuff too. So that's, there's so many avenues you can go with it. And yeah, absolutely. And then, I mean, you even have stuff that's like Shadow of Colossus, where it's just it's just pure, just like, just just watch that game forever. And and even still, there is hints of a story there. Uh, yeah, Shadow of Colossus absolutely. was done by Team Ico. Yeah, that's and, very minimal, very minimal story. Mm-hmm. But you still feel everything. You still feel like you've... Yeah gone on the trip with these characters yeah and there's still still a lot going on with it too you brought up a really interesting point about uh dark souls and and storytelling and way you can be drip fed story Mm -hmm. um i think when things are told diegetically when things happen in the world of the game Mm -hmm. that help you piece the story together it kind of pulls you into it more and i think it makes you more uh receptive to what's happening in the game well because you grow with the character like you actually feel growth and and some games absolutely can do that. Uh, one of my favorite games that did that, and we, again, we've talked about this one before, was uh, Spec Ops: The Line. See, I never which, got to play that one. I heard it was so good too. It is a brilliant, brilliant game, and it talks about mm. the it talks about the horrors of war and the mental aspects of PTSD and what it can have on 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 a person. Mm-hmm. And the game itself now has become something of legend because you can no longer you can't get copies of it anymore. Because oh, yeah. the studio out of business, but it's an absolutely like wonderful story. You can find playthroughs of it online, which mm-hmm. I highly recommend. And it, you feel for these characters who who aren't there. What do, what do you think about the other side? About when if somebody says video games aren't art, well, it's because they don't understand it. They're probably not from this either this generation that they don't understand it, or they just never gave it a chance. To be honest. <laughs> Because I've heard the argument, well, Tetris isn't art, but, but it is. Yeah, uh, It very much is in a way. And I, I completely agree with you. I think that art is something that elicits an emotional response in any form. Mm-hmm. And I think games can bring them to us in a way that is more deep, more impactful. Because like you mentioned, we play them. We're moving, we're making the decisions of the characters. Mm-hmm. What... um. What game do you think impacted you the most? Well, that's hard. I don't really have a favorite game, so it's kind of hard. Um, I'll say one of them. Uh, definitely Mario 64 was a big one. 
uh, one of the big ones because like that game changed everything. It did. It absolutely everything. did. Everything. Like, like I was like I love my Mario World and Link to the Past and all my Super Nintendo is still my favorite console, but when that Mario 64 came out and that 64 came out, my brain didn't even know how to wire, like wrap my brain around it. Like like I struggled just to comprehend that I'm controlling something in a 3D space. Like I just couldn't mm-hmm. do it for like a good little bit. Like, <laughs> like it changed everything. And it, I was it did. It it absolutely did. And it opened the door for so many more games that, that we have mm-hmm. now. And it's it's absolutely mm-hmm. fantastic. And I think that yeah. games are they've become a very vital part of, of our lives and our mm-hmm. society. And like I mentioned, this past year without games, I, I don't know where where we'd be. Absolutely. I uh, I personally have a Switch, but I no longer have a Switch because my wife bought Animal Crossing. So. Yeah, that 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 last year when that game came out, that was my pretty much three months. Like when that game came out, but it came out at just the time when we needed it. Yeah, everybody was playing it. Like everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, getting back to cooking, we talked about video games being art uh mm-hmm. do you think cooking is an art yeah just like like just like what we talked about with everything else like it's like you can like it's and it's not even just like the fancy art like of course you have like the artist version of the things like when you get into like the chefs and the like the more fancy restaurants like they actually visually make it an art form you mm-hmm. know uh, but you i still think it's an art form even when it's not visually art like it's just because there's so much going on to like get certain tastes and stuff like that. Certain seasons that get certain outputs of just minor, minor tweaks of things change. can change a whole dish. Uh, and that's every dish, like any cooking. And uh, that goes with baking too. And I'm not a baker. That's one thing I will say. <laughs> I cannot bake. I cook. I cannot bake. <laughs> and, but, uh, I've, but I've always said that uh, cooking is art. Baking is science. Yeah, it is. Yeah, because uh-huh. you absolutely have to follow. In baking, you can't just throw something in to see what happens. No, it's it's like do or die. And I think that's part of the beauty of cooking, and it's yeah. that you can just see what happens. You yeah. can throw a new spice in and uncover a completely new dish. That's what I love about it. I, I like to experiment a lot, so that's kind of where a lot of the, I feel like that comes from that artistry side of things. What is the uh, what's the weirdest food experiment you've ever done? Um, one time I did, I had a bunch of wonton wrappers. I made a good, a really, I know how to make a really good wonton soup now, by the way, um, Ooh, with nice. like, with like egg noodles and stuff like that in it too. Um, but I had some leftover wonton wrappers and I was trying to figure out what to do with it. So I air fried it in like a cone to make like wonton tacos. It did not nice. go well because <laughs> the, oh no. The, the wontons were very dry. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't put enough um, oil for them oh, that's... To, to do them in an the air fryer. So that was, a, that was, a, it, and it had like a lot of wasabi. I was trying to do like a hybrid taco too. It wasn't just a wonton. Mm-hmm. Like I also had wasabi in the taco too. <laughs> it was, it was not good. That it, it was the weirdest, not good. I love, I love wasabi and wontons, but man, that was terrible. <laughs> but hey look uh, that's when it comes to experimentation sometimes you gotta bust so uh, that's that's how we learn that's exactly how we learn yeah. um so cooking is something that i personally feel should be accessible to everyone absolutely. and do you think that now it's become more accessible to more people yeah absolutely um especially there's more of a like food cult like in the past like decade I don't know if you've noticed that as well. There's more of a food culture in the United States. Oh, yeah. Like, you have a lot of that part to, like, the Food Network kind of blowing up with all those, like, personalities like Guy Fieri and uh, Anthony Bourdain and uh, just goes on and on with all these people that are, have their own cooking shows that people love to watch. Uh, but it, it was different, though, because it was like they started doing stuff that was new and different and, like, trying things out. Then my big like my favorite one was Anthony, obviously. Like he he just he wasn't afraid to like show people the different cultures and foods and stuff like that. And I think that gravitated toward everyone else. 
he uh, he was a he was a true inspiration. Um, shortly after he unfortunately passed, I was actually at the CNN Center in Atlanta, mm-hmm. and they had put up a picture on the wall, an advertisement for his uh, new season, and everybody in the building had gone over and put post-it notes and candles and left mm-hmm. little things. For him. Uh, he was he was uh, you're right uh, he was an inspiration to everyone. Um, so uh, we are getting short on time. So I have one last big question I really yeah. want to ask you, and I like to ask this to every kind of entertainer, everybody hmm. who has had time to experience things. If there were one thing that you could go back and tell your younger self, what would that be? Um. I'd say uh, definitely, like, I'm trying to think what it would be. I guess it would be more of, like, get into a lot of the, uh, get into more of, like, learning about, like, what I do now sooner. Because I think I kind of didn't, like, I kind of pushed that aside a little bit. Not pushed it, but I didn't really understand it until I I went for it. Um, Mm -hmm. Like, like film school, I learned a lot. I'm not going to lie. But I did not fully understand things until I started producing my own content as a freelance artist, like shooting, lighting, editing, everything. Like I wish I would have did that sooner. Like I did that, like the the little camera stuff I did, like the little video stuff I did in high school, but we just shot it on camera and threw it together. Like that was nothing. Mm-hmm. But like, I felt like I learned everything post college more, more so because it was me being hands on with everything. I wish I would have, I would have pushed myself a little sooner on that, to be honest. Right. Well, you, you can't blame yourself for that. And I've always said yeah. that as long as you're trying something, as long as you're doing something, yeah. it doesn't matter when you yeah. start. I was also broke uh, as a joke for the longest time, so I had no camera until after college. <laughs> Fair. Uh, Brad, we are just about out of time. Uh, where can people find you? Where can they see your stuff? How do they see you? All right, yeah. So uh, I have my personal freelance uh, page on Facebook. That's uh, Hello Llama Pro- uh, Productions. But I'm mostly gonna be pushing. I'd rather push the 16-bit picnic. So that's what I'm gonna do. So go follow us. Uh, the 16-bit. <laughs> follow us on 16-bit picnic. Uh, uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube. We're like as much as I love doing it, have fun. But we'd like to make some money too. Why not? Give us some subscribes there. <laughs> Uh, we got 16-bit picnic and extra points, which is the game seg- the lengthened game segment of 16-bit picnic, and we also have a podcast called Bidiots on Spotify, Apple, and uh, Google Play. That is fantastic, and uh, I, I really hope people tune in because it's really really fun. Yeah. Uh, Brad, thank you so much for sitting down and talking to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, can't wait to see what you do in the future. Uh, everybody you. else, I hope you enjoyed the show. Hope you had fun. Thank you for tuning in to the Entertainer Spotlight. And we will see you next time. I've been your host, Scott J. Carroll.